Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm here tonight with Kristen Hewitts and John Panola, two of our life coaches. And, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about tonight in dialogue, meaning we have no prepared scripts, we're simply going to share our perspectives in this topic of what's kind of happening to more and more people the longer and longer we're involved in this compression, in this compressed state. <clears throat> um, people start to go stir crazy. You know, they get bored or they go in another direction and they get more tense and angry. You know, their stress is coming up and, and we're under unusual stress now, the type that many of us have never experienced in our lives before. So it is not about the stress, it's about how we respond to the stress. Um, we, we assume that, you know, we're speaking to people that we know people watching on all levels from people right at the front lines to people further back, as I said last time. And, and we also know that of all the people listening and watching that um, some are doing a pretty good job and some are really still struggling to get their bearings. To, to get this incorporated into their life, to get their heads wrapped around this. And others are really kind of moving forward and they're making the kind of positive changes that were afforded in the opportunity of, of this crisis. So John and Christy will be speaking with me about this and um, we'll see where we go from there. So do each of you have thoughts about or experiences of that feeling of you're starting to kind of need more space. You know, you're needing more dimension. I know I am. Um, you know, in the beginning, well, and still I am working a lot. And um, so it's very, it takes up a lot of my time. It occupies my brain quite a bit. And I consider myself fortunate that I am still working, that I don't have to worry about putting food on the table. Thank goodness. Um, my husband is still working, so we're okay in that way. But uh, yes, the stir crazy thing um, it is starting to wear, wear me down. And there are moments where I feel like, I don't know if I can continue to do this much longer. Mm -hmm. and, and then I remind myself I can. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's normal. That's exactly what we have to do. You can kind of pick yourself up again. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are other people in my, uh, in my range here. So I have to take them into consideration in my, you know, when I have my mini meltdowns, in fact, it, it, Richard Hake, I don't know if you're familiar with Richard Hake, the reporter who just passed away. Um, I was really distraught over that. Um, that man was my friend in the mornings getting ready for work for years. I listened to him on the news and um, while there wasn't any particular special thing, it was his voice. It was that soothing factor, just sort of like bringing me awareness and things like that. And I don't normally get very emotional over people that, you know, like I feel empathetic toward people who um, die too young when they're families, but it's not something I feel in a personal way. But I think right now under the circumstances, I felt that very personally and um, I've had misty moments where I, I start to, to cry because of the sadness of that. And I think it's that just sort of was the impetus for the empathy that I'm feeling for people all over. Um, and, and, you know, that also speaks to the, the very thing that helps you know, get us back. These mm -hmm. people or these places or, or these things in our lives that really kind of firm up our, our lives and our identity to some extent. And then a person who has that kind of significance dies or a place that has a certain significance changes or goes away or, or people in your lives begin to have a little more distance or closer to you or any of these various factors that might happen kind of shake us up a little bit. We even use those terms, you know, boy, it's really shook me up or rocked my world or whatever. And um, it's, it's how do we learn to kind of handle those, the, the, the balls that we're juggling there? How do we learn to handle this? Um, it, it's nice if we go to training camps and then go home to a nice warm bed at night, but we have to learn it within the everyday lives of growing up and becoming adults and becoming more, more human, more, more 
a loving, caring, uh, what human being potentially can be. So how can each of us in these times not go stir crazy, but recognize that what's stirring us up are external forces and factors, and we need to perceive them and respond to them in a way so that we can begin to get back to the important work of helping the world be a better place. I think it's it's really interesting right now. Um, yeah, I feel that with so many of um, so many of our our patterns, our routines being unsettled, um, it's become a lot easier for me, at least, to take notice of the things that in this new state are both unsettling me, and also the things that are completely settling and comforting for me. Um, so it's, it's been a very enriching time to uh, just kind of take stock of the inventory of things to avoid and things to return to. Um, you know, we were discussing a little bit before how nice the technology, something like this can really be to, to keep people connected uh, in this strange time. Um, and I was telling my friends the other day how specifically for, for an introverted person like me, like I'm, I'm finding this is nice. I'm here, I'm with you, but also I can just close my laptop at any point and, and walk away, which, which is very wonderful. I am fine. I'm finding my love of books is coming back. You know, now that things are simplified and I have time to listen to the audiobooks, to to read, to go on more walks, um, I'm reminding myself of what is fueling me. And it's a great reminder for those times when uh, I am unsettled, when I am more stressed, that I, I can go back to that menu of items and think, all right, well, what about reading? What about going for that walk? What about just listening to some music that, you know, as silly as it seems, um, may not cross my mind in the normal world? Well, look, you know, the thing that is, I, it goes right to the center of the point of what you're saying, John, in my own mind, it goes back to the notion of how are we going to handle all this stuff? How are we going to respond to this stuff? You know, knowing that we were good, the, the coaches, they only knew the title of what we would be talking about tonight because we all enjoy very much in dialogue being able to just see what emerges here. But as I, I was thinking about it this morning, I thought, you know, I have an unusual gap of time today where I don't really have anything planned. Let, let me not go into the routines of what I've been doing, but let me just have this gap time and see what happens. And when I kind of really settled into it, I thought, you know, all I want to do is go to bed, maybe watch a movie, like, like an old black and white movie about life at another time. Or there is this book I kind of want to get to. And then I hear my granddaughter steps because she's around and immediately that's where I want to go. And, and there I feel filled and engaged, but I purposefully let her run over to Nana after a while and went back into, okay, let me just do nothing. Let, let me get bored. Because while we have social isolation, we also have, for some people, a kind of loneliness isolation, if you might call it. They may be with other people, but they're not really connecting. And if we are not connecting interpersonally, whether it's at least through the video, but at best in person, that's going to have a physiological and psychological and emotional effect on us. We, you know, we need to have connection with the people in our lives that, that matter. And so I let myself kind of go into a place of, hey, I'm not going to really work on connecting to anyone or anything. I'm just going to sit here. And as I was sitting there, I thought, well, all I want to do is go to sleep. I'm tired. Let me just watch a movie. And then I thought, well, let me see if I can work with this and change my physical, mental, and emotional state. So I called a friend I haven't talked to in a long time that interpersonal connection kind of lifted my spirits. 
you know, uh, we, we've been talking maybe once uh, every three weeks or month or so, but we've been disconnected again back and forth for years. And, and that kind of lifted my spirits. And I said, I'm going to do a workout. And then I did a good workout. I took a shower and then I meditated. And I, I felt myself literally letting myself not slip into, not letting myself go into sort of just blah. And there's a big difference between that kind of uh, uh, atrophy and genuine fatigue. When you've worked hard and you're tired and you really want a day and you need a day and you maybe even should take a day to just watch movies in your pajamas all day. Which Kristen does most of the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I, I deserve a day like that. Um, we all do. Yeah. I, I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, going stir crazy, having those moments of feeling so emotional over what's happening, listening to a news story about some sad story and just getting, you know, feeling it. And, um, and there are moments where I feel like, all right, I don't have time to do this right now. I don't have time to break down. And then other times when I just sort of say, it's okay, it's all right. I, I, you know, accepting the fact that I'm going to have that, those moments, allowing that to happen because I think I, I, you know, that's sort of me. I need that to just sort of um, process those feelings and let them move through me and not let them either well up or denying them, but just sort of somewhere in between, just sort of allowing it to happen, moving mm -hmm. forward. Um, that's the center. I'm sorry? That's the center. The yes. place in between. You said somewhere in between. Yes, know. exactly. And it's it's trying to find that balance. And I'm watching my family members, and it's actually really an interesting observation. Um, you know, my husband and I are both working, and and but his way to cope is to do projects around the house, which I got to say is pretty wonderful, because uh, all sorts of stuff is getting done, and I love it. Um, but that's very soothing for him. And I have one of my children is uh, a workout fiend and he has been working out like crazy, going for bike rides and runs and, um, and he's been baking and cooking, never has done this before, but he's made his own sourdough starter, which is, I guess, the, uh, the quarantine thing to do and different things like that. And it's fascinating to watch the people that are so close to me, how they are, you know, how each of us copes in our own individual way. And I guess that's another thing that even though we're all so separate, another thing that bonds us all is that we all find our own coping mechanisms. And um, I like the variety. In that. I, I think it's kind of nice to watch. Yeah. And, and, and getting everything coordinated right before I came down, my, my oldest daughter and her husband and, their daughter, my granddaughter, is with us, my wife and I. We were, as I walked into the kitchen, coming, getting ready to come down, she said, um, well, maybe we could work out a schedule and so on. And I said, yeah, that's it's really important that we have a schedule. Then we know what our routine is. Right now, it's, you know, it's almost every morning we're saying, hey, I need someone to watch the baby because my daughter, Laura, is involved with all kinds of stuff right now. You know, she's working <laughs> morning till night, plus with the baby. That... Um, I said, well, let's, if we have a routine, if we have a pattern, if we have a schedule, you know, and we'll work it around times I'm, each of us is not available to see when we squeeze things to make everyone, and the day will run smoothly. We all need to put routines into our lives or we'll go stir crazy. Mm -hmm. Too much rigidity of routine, you'll, you'll, you'll implode. You know, too much looseness, you kind of spread out. We need structure. We need form. To, into which we put our best selves. That's so interesting. I, I keep thinking about this um, with the removal of all that structure, you know, the kind of the implied question then becomes for all of us who have the schedules upset, whether the routine has been removed altogether or altered. Um, but as that happens, that, that question that keeps coming up subconsciously or, or very consciously, what do I want my new routine to look like? You know, with, within the areas of freedom, what do I want to do with them? Do I want to just rest? Do I want to read a book? Is that an option? You know, 
Um, it also is so interesting to me when all of these things are upset and turned over to just naturally, it gets us to question those things that we haven't been questioning for a really long time because it has been a part of the routine. It has been just a part of the way that the world, the day works. Um, Sounds like you have some good material there for your next poem. Uh, one could say that, but I, I think and sympathize with all of the high school students right now who are going from, you know, being in class and learning at 7.30 a.m. to being online and learning at 10. I suspect that some of them are thinking, why did we wait so long to shift this back? And I imagine that some of them are going to have a very difficult time if things go back to the capital M normal that they were before. Yeah. And, you know, it's when you experience different things from what you're used to is when you start to realize that there are options. Otherwise, we think that's the only thing. When we were in Italy uh, about a year or so ago, I think it's like maybe one o'clock in the afternoon, I see all the kids coming out of school. Or maybe it's even earlier than that. And I said, is it a holiday? There's no school's done. And they, they all, and you see all the, the families all get together and have lunch. And then, then they go back to work and kids have the rest of the afternoon to be with their family and to do things. And even though I studied comparative education in grad school and, and then reading about it, I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. Now I was experiencing it. And I thought, whoa, <laughs> what life would have been like for me if I would be out of school by one o'clock? So yeah, we begin to, by juxtaposition, we begin to be aware of, of what um, restraints there might already be on our own lives. And to your point that, yeah, we can begin to maybe take some of these things with us into the new life that we're going to have. Yeah, um, before we go on, I just want to apologize now for the fact that I'm going to have to drop out a little bit early, probably because I have another meeting at um, seven o'clock. But um, thinking of structure, schedule, and for me, purpose. Um, I know that I'm one of those people that who, I, if I don't have the structure and the schedule and most importantly, the purpose for myself, uh, then I tend to waffle. I don't know what to do with myself and I will waste a lot of time. And so I like to have Structure. I like a schedule. I do have a schedule right now. It is not my normal schedule. So it's been, it's taken a little getting used to. And I knew that from the beginning that, it, you know, this, this adjusted schedule was going to be something that I need a little time to get used to um, because I've been doing the same thing for a very long time and uh, no complaints. I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. And again, I'm extremely grateful that I'm still working, but it has been unsettling for me. And um, as much as I am grateful and in a good position, I am also very much looking forward to having my previous schedule. I won't call it um, normal because we all know normal isn't always healthy and normal is not going to be the same coming out of this. It's not going to be what we used to have. It's a whole new ball game and nobody really knows what that's going to look like, myself included. And so I, I am looking forward to my previous schedule, but I am curious about what the future holds and how this is all going to look on the other side of this. And, and maybe that's another one of the gifts of this time that we realize we don't know what's ahead. I mean, when you think about it, you never know what's ahead. Certainly, you know, we wake up every day expecting and anticipating. And then, you know, the gods make their move as to what, what's going to be happening. Um, but you mentioned the need for routine. I mean, the need for structure. Yes, we need routine. We need structure. We need something that becomes the form of our lives. And right now, the form has been shaken up for some far more, for some less, but most everyone can shake it up. And uh, socially, politically, economically, worldwide, you know, things are a shaken. And, you know, I choose to believe that they're gonna settle into a better place. 
that we're going to come through this with, well, we can come through this with insights and further sense of meaning and purpose and need for routine, not too much, not too little. We, we may come through it with those insights, or we may come through it 25 pounds heavier, you know, unshaven, you know, and, and disheveled and hoarders, or terribly depressed, or maybe so anxious that we've gone over the other side. And while I'm speaking in extreme terms, the work is always, how do we get to the center where there's the good things and the not so good things, the, the too much things and the not enough things, and the too fast things and too slow things? How, how, do, we, how do we come to that balance? And in, in my own life and growth, the more that I stay attuned to that, the more it comes in. And times when I, I, I couldn't, my, my, I could not see any light because my head was all filled with, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And they said this and they said that. That stops you from being able to say, okay, I know as much as I need to know right now, which is uh, ways to protect myself, my family from harm. That's, that's the simple line. I know how to protect. And, and I have, if I have some influence out there on how they vote and what they do, I will absolutely stand up and do that. But I will put my energy into what will help move my future into a direction that contributes to the health and integrity of my whole being. Understand my whole being, my whole being, which is my body, mind, and emotions, and the people, and the places and things that give my life a form and a structure. Then either we're going to let the outside forces totally determine all of that, who the people are going to be in our lives, what will our places be like, where will we go, and what things will we grasp and hold on to, and further determine the state of our own body, mind, emotions. Or we can understand, yes, there's always that energy coming into us from the outside, but we have tremendous potential energy from the inside that we could move up and out and through our body, mind, and emotions so that we do have influence on what happens in our future. It's like people talk about practice. I need a practice. You're always practicing. Either you're practicing good things or not so good things. Either you're practicing being more centered or less centered. You're, you're practicing getting sick or getting well. And again, those are directions we go in. And sometimes we are born with certain limitations. Well, not sometimes, we all are born with limitations. You know, your, your height, your weight, and gender, and all these kinds of things. So yeah, we're, there, we're, there's, we, we're born into a physiological system that's genetics and all that. And we're also born into a body that will be growing out of that and a mind that will be influenced by the people, places, and things and the, of the environment we're in. Right now, we're in a, a, a isolating environment very different from a very enriching environment. You know, we see that with animal studies and with people living in groups and so on and so forth, a certain amount of space that's needed in which to explore. I was looking at uh, turtles this morning with my granddaughter and we we're looking at different turtles and how you'd set up a terrarium. And, um, and they were talking about, this is nice. So there's a little tunnel and here's some water and here's a place to climb. And, you know, she said, it looks like fun. And I thought, well, that, that's it. The need for a stimulating environment for, for the turtle, for each of us. And some of us are in environments that have less wiggle room and, and it's sort of stuck. And that wears on you and it makes it easier to um, go stir crazy. So yes, I know we're kind of racing to the end here. We need to um, all do what we can, all do what we can to hold ourselves together meaning clearer minds with more positive thinking, you know, freer emotion with love and compassion and care. And, you know, the actions, the actions that you can take with your body, what you can do to keep it healthy and to use this body to do things within your sphere of influence. It might mean one phone call to someone who it really matters that you cared enough to call. Anyway, Chris and I know you've got to run. John, thank you for being with us. Um, 
yes, keep in mind that uh, the coaches are offering a complimentary, complimentary session to anyone who needs one um, or wants one <clears throat> or would like one. I mean, you know, the Center for Optimum Living has always worked with people who are, are not so much um, in desperate need, but people who on another level just desperately need to kind of un unburden themselves and free themselves and clear themselves physically, mentally, emotionally, so they, they can lead a more fulfilling life. So anyway, thank you for joining us. Take good care. And we'll hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.